Welcome to the Haunted 365. In this video, we're going to be doing a corpsing job on a Dollar Tree bat. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is just remove these wings, which I believe just snap into place. set that aside so now these will be easier to work with and what I have here is just a couple pieces of black trash bag like so and what I'm gonna do is on the back side of the wings I'm gonna put just a little bead of glue along these bones and then get this black plastic attached down to the glue and for this, I'm just using clear school glue. And then just to make sure I have even coverage, I'm gonna go back over it with one of these super El Cheapo model brushes. And just make sure I have an even coat of glue on all the bones. And I'm just going to attach the trash bag. And I'm just going to move over and do the exact same thing to the other side. And while the wings are drying, I'm gonna turn my attention to the main body of the bat. It doesn't look too terrible as is, but I'm gonna go through and kind of dry brush it with some black or gray or maybe some brown and just kind of tone down the shininess of it too so it looks a little more realistic. All right, I got black, brown, and white all right here that I'm just gonna kind of mix together into a kind of a drab, dark charcoal gray. I'm gonna get most of the paint off the brush. And then just start dry brushing this thing a little. I'm going to go on a little heavier with the black paint mixture inside the ears and the eye sockets and on the nose. All right, that's a little better. I'm also going to Get up inside this rib cage with the black to kind of darken it out a little bit when you're looking at it head on. I'm also going to add a little black to the inside of the mouth. So 
far so good. I'm going to implement a corpsing technique on the main body of the bat using just plain liquid latex, some just standard white toilet paper, no fancy print or colors, and some cotton balls. I'm going to start with the rib cage first, and the first thing I'm going to do is just brush on a light coat of the liquid latex. All right, I'm gonna rip off a piece of toilet paper and making sure that it's got like frayed edges. And I'm just gonna lay this over the rib cage and get it firmly attached to that liquid late, oops, to that liquid latex that I just got through putting on there. And I'm gonna back that up with another layer. Or at least I'm going to top it with another layer, not necessarily back it up. All right, I've got it on there and folded other underneath on the inside. Now I'm going to go back to my El Cheapo brush and use the back side to put the detail in or put it back where the rib cage has the separations in between the ribs. It's not going to be pretty, but that's kind of the point. You can use the side to make the indentions come back around the ribs. And I'm going to use the end of it, the, the more pointy end, to kind of wear out some holes just here and there. But I don't want to overdo it because that would just kill the effect. Now I pulled off just a really small pinch of the cotton ball where it's all just kind of a big fuzzy mess and I put that on the back and then I'm just going to wet that out with latex and that detail will really come out once this is completely dry and we go over it and do some dry brushing. All right, the latex is pretty much dry, so I'm gonna start on the head now, and I'm gonna concentrate mainly on the, the main part of the skull and a little bit on the sides right here on the back of the jaw. And this time I'm gonna use strictly the cotton balls and liquid latex. I'm just gonna shred off a few little fluffy pieces here and there. Take the pieces of cotton ball and dab them in there. And go over that with a little more latex. The cotton balls are going to add the texture that we're looking for. And they also inherently are going to have little strings and stuff like that that want to hang off of it which is also a desired effect because it'll look like little pieces of skin hanging off and veins and sinewy tissue and whatnot. You see the effect we got there? is now it kind of bridges the gap in the jaw. And I'm going to go ahead, before I let this 
dry and I will have this jaw open while it dries so it kind of holds it there too. See that little string right there that kind of bridges the gap and then you got this opening there. That is exactly the type of thing we're looking for. You can also just kind of dabble a latex on there and kind of mess it up a little bit just for some simple texture. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to let this dry and then come back to it and we'll just do a little bit around the midriff here and some on the legs just so everybody has a little corpsing going on and you can really speed up this drying process using a hair dryer on the uh, cool setting you don't really need any heat uh, this liquid latex dries through evaporation it's not like a, an enamel paint or something like that where the heat would also kind of cause like an exothermic reaction or something. This stuff purely is drying because of the ammonia content and the water just evaporating off and leaving the rubber behind. So I'm going to hit this with a hair dryer and come back to it. Alright, now I'm going to use the same technique with the cotton balls and kind of try to bridge some gaps between the, the pelvis area here and this rib cage so it kind of connects the two and bridges the gap and looks pretty cool. So all I need is a little bit more cotton. And I'll go ahead and get some latex going on here so this stuff has something to stick to. Kind of get it on the edges and up inside the rib cage. And then hit that with a little more latex. Being really careful to not just smash the cotton completely into it. You could go ahead and dip the cotton ball into the latex first and then place it where you want it after it's already been kind of soaked. And to show you what I mean, saturated and then you can pull it out we'll stick that up in there like it's guts Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of stipple the legs a little bit just so they at least have a little bit of texture on them. I'll even lay a couple pieces of cotton here and there just to add to the texture. If I can get it onto the bat and off of me. Now while the latex on the body dries, I'm going to turn my attention back to these wings and I'm going to use a little bit of the liquid latex on the end of one of these small brushes and I'm just going to brush over 
the tops of these bones trying to get a little bit of the latex to bridge between the black garbage bag and the bones themselves so that way they're attached even more firmly than just that bit of glue on the back side. Now that I've gone around all the bones with the liquid latex, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of smear all this little leftover bits of latex that have spilled over onto the plastic. Just going and making like little striations in here so that way the plastic itself will also have a bit of texture to it and look a little bit less like a, well, a black trash bag. I'm gonna let that dry completely and go ahead and start on wing number two. Well, I'm letting those wings dry. I'm gonna mix up a bit more paint here. I go with black. Another bit of brown, about equal parts. And just a touch of white. Get that all mixed together. Maybe just a touch more white. I want it to be pretty dark, but not straight black. All right. Now everywhere that I have the uh, the latex corpsing on here, I'm going to go over it with this dark color. I go back in these ears and try to darken them up even more so that way I can go back on those ridges and put highlights in afterward. Alright, now we just need to let this guy dry. Now that the body is dry, I'm going to go ahead and do some highlights on here with a dry brush technique. So I got some black out and I'm going to put proportionally much more white than black so I definitely get more of a lighter gray color out of this. Now I'm using a, a wider, stiffer bristle brush that I'm just going to load up with the paint and then get the majority of the excess off. And then just lightly go over the high spots. Now I'm going to add even more white to this to do a third layer 
that is strictly going to hit just the highest of areas and be truly highlights. Now, as a bit of a little finishing touch, I'm going to use straight white with the least little touch of brown. I'm just going to mix that on the brush. I'm going to add a little yellow into this too. Once again, I'm going to get rid of most of the excess really brings out like those ridges inside the ears. Now just to add a little frosting, I'm going to use straight white and just I'm barely going to graze over these textures to bring them out on the highest spots. Now, just to highlight these teeth, I'm going to go over them with a little bit of this white and just a touch of this dingy grayish or yellow color just so they're not, you know, stark white. I doubt bats take care of their teeth that well. And we're going to assume this is a vampire bat, so I'm going to put out a touch of crimson and just get a tiny amount on the brush. And just kind of go around the gum line of where the, well, where the gum line would be around the teeth. And for good measure, let's get a little bit of this red up here in the guts area. Maybe some of these are still a little fresh. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and dry brush just a little red kind of here and there just to add a little more depth and detail and interest to it. All right, I'd say that's good on the body. Let's move on to the wings. I'm gonna use a razor knife to trim off the excess plastic I'm going to do a bit of a upside down U shape in between the bones here to give it that classic bat look.
All right, now we got to paint this. I'm going to start off again with the almost black color. Actually going to darken that up even more with some more black. Alright, now I'm going to switch to a highlight color and go straight into the light gray. And just lightly go over the details. Lastly, just going to take care of some of these rough edges. I'm going to hit the back side with a little bit of this gray, especially on the bones, to kind of dingy those up. And then just put some highlights across here, which should kind of highlight where the bones are. Both wings are done, and now we can get these reattached. They should just snap right in here. Now I'm going to go through just with my dirty brush and a, just a myriad of different paints just to get kind of a nasty color going on and just kind of. Make these blend into the body a little better using the same colors right through here. And I believe we about have a finished product here. It's pretty amazing that you can get these skeleton bats from the dollar store. Hear my dog up there going nuts for some reason. They sell these bats or one similar to this one. I've seen them in other places and they're like five or six bucks. 